สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I am excited to finally be making l u k c h i n So l u k c h i n is the nickname of my baby. But it is also Asian style meatball. So this is the meatballs that you find in pho or in like any kind of noodle soups, really. And in Thailand, you'll find them on a stick, grilled or deep fried, served with the sauce. It's really good, really popular. It can be made from any kind of meat, really, like fish, pork, chicken, beef, anything. Um, typically, this is not something people make at home because it's so easily bought from outside and is a little bit labor-intensive to make at home. But it is totally possible, um, and it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time, and it's worth it to be honest. Because in commercial ones, they add a lot of additives to get that bouncy texture that um, is typical of luk chin. So if you don't want to eat too many chemicals, it's also a good thing to make at home. All right, let's get started. So first, we're going to make a paste of garlic and peppercorns to season the meatballs. Now, yes, we're going to grind it in here anyway, but I want to make sure I don't get any big chunks of pepper or garlic. So I'm going to grind it totally, totally fine first in the mortar. You can also microplane your garlic too if you want. Just get those black peppercorns uh, finely ground. I almost said finely, finely grind. You can do white pepper. Totally fine. Okay, now you got it super, super fine. I'm gonna add my garlic, bloop, and get that fine as well. There you go. You want it quite fine for this. Now, this is very easy. We're just gonna throw everything into a food processor, give it a blitz, and then it's done. Um, you want a pretty Powerful food processor for this because you want a, the texture to be quite fine. If you don't have it, I mean, any food processor is going to work, but just know that the weaker the motor, the more coarse the texture is going to be. Not a totally bad thing. It's just something to expect. So I've got here some ground pork. Lean ground pork, I should add, and for this you definitely want lean. I have tried this with not lean ground pork, and it just made the meatballs too mushy at the end. However, if you're gonna do beef, do the opposite, because I found that lean ground beef is too lean, and then it made the meatballs too firm. So I want the the beef to have a little bit more fat. So. Also, something to play around with because everybody's lean ground beef at different stores in different country is going to be different. So if you find that the texture is too soft at the end, it might be that there's too much fat in it. Okay, um, I am going to add some seasoning, which includes soy sauce and salt, a little bit of sugar. It's not going to make the meatball sweet, but it will create a well balanced flavor in the meatballs. The sugar is really important. Um, Also, a little bit of tapioca starch is going to help sort of bind everything and gives it a bit of a bounce. Bounciness is sort of a desired characteristic of these meatballs. And the thing that's really, really going to help with bounciness is baking powder. Yes, I don't actually know how it works, but it does. I have made them without baking powder and with baking powder, and you can really tell the difference. There, it's much more bouncy with the baking powder. Uh, commercially, they add a different set of chemicals that help to maximize the bounciness of these things, which you can buy as well. Um, like in Thailand, it's it's sold in a package for making like hot dogs and meatballs and things like that. So if you want super bouncy, you can buy one of those. Our garlic pepper paste goes in. Now we're just gonna blitz this until everything is very very fine. But there's one more thing I'm gonna grab, and that is ice. I got ice cubes here, and you want to be adding ice cubes as the motor is going. When the motor is running, it's going to generate heat, and if it gets too hot, the fat will sort of separate out from the meat. So the ice is added to keep everything cold, and also the added water from the ice contributes to that bounciness. So I'm going to run this machine, and then just add the ice cubes, sort of one at a time, as I go. But now all my ice cubes are stuck together. Oh, there we go. So make sure your ice cubes are not all stuck together. <laughs> okay, and I've lost one. Ice cube down. Be 
careful, the machine walks. So like everyone said, keep an eye on the surface that it's on because it's so there's so much stuff in it right now. As it goes, it kind of just slowly moves. So make sure it's not gonna fall off your counter. So um, we're still we still got a bit to go, but I'm just gonna stop to scrape just to redistribute things. Okay, let's do one more scrape. One thing that I notice happens with this machine is you blend it, blend it, blend it, and the blade slowly gets lifted up, lifted up higher and higher. Like in the beginning, it'll be flush against the bottom and then slowly it gets higher because the pour kind of slowly goes in and lifts it up. And then at some point it like it's floating now. Like it's not really touching the bottom. And then so you get a layer of pork at the bottom that I find doesn't get mixed as well. See how like the pork gets all in here. And I think that like pushes the blade up as you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out, put the blade back in and then put the pork back in so that I can thoroughly mix it. It's a complete pain in the butt. You don't have to do it. You can totally stop here. But if you want a really, really fine texture, it's something to consider doing. And it's all like in the center here too. So I just, I just go in and clean basically the scent, the mechanism that the blade is sitting on, so that I can do one more round with the blade properly situated. Just another minute or so. Okay, that looks better. I mean, to be honest, with homemade meatballs, it's never going to be as silky smooth as the commercially made one because we're just using home appliances here. But for me, this is good enough. Mmm, it's like pork soft serve ice cream. So that's it. That is the Luk Chin mix. And now is the hard part. The meatball squeezing party is about to begin. So here's your setup. You want a pot of water that is not is hot and steaming, but not boiling. This is important because if it's vigorously boiling, boiling, the look chin is not going to hold its shape as well. So there should be steam coming off, but there should not be like movement bubbling in the water. So, and then you want to take a bunch in your hand and here is where the action happens. You're going to first squeeze this out. Yes, I know it looks completely horrendous, but just stick with me. But this doesn't look smooth, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your thumb, pull it back in and do another squeeze. And now it's smoother. Pull it back in and do another squeeze. And when you're happy with how smooth it is, I'm going to start over because I'm not happy with that. When you're happy with how smooth it is, then you're going to nick it off with a wet spoon and you're going to go against the long side so that it's a little rounder. And then this plops into the pot that is too hot. I'm going to show you that again. So just keep watching. So I squeeze it and I just keep squeezing it up. And then when I'm happy with how smooth it is, I take it off with a spoon and I drop it in the water. You can make it big or you can make it small. It's up to you. and wet the spoon occasionally because it'll help the spoon not stick to the pork. And the first time you try it, it's gonna feel like this is a complete disaster, but um, trust me, you will get a hang of it. And just let those go. Don't worry about them. You, at this temperature, you can't possibly overcook them or anything. So they're just gonna hang out till you're done. So I've got all my balls squeezed. Now, for those of you who wanna see more of the squeezing technique, maybe that wasn't enough, I have a whole separate video of me just squeezing these balls, these meatballs. And so that you can just watch and follow along. You can have it playing while you're making these so that you can keep referring to it and watching me do it. Not only that, in that video, I have Adam try to squeeze the meatballs for the first time, just so you can see what it might look like the first time you attempt to do it. And he does give a good tip as he discovered so if you want to check that out, I will link to the video up here and also in the description box below. It's just a long video of me squeezing meatballs, okay? Nothing super exciting, but it's there as a resource if you need to watch more of it. Okay, so now that the meatballs are in here, 
I want to keep cooking them for another 10 minutes. So now, you can do whatever you want with these. I usually just put them in noodle soups. But I'm going to show you how to make the ones that are on the stick. So I'm going to put them on a stick, grill them, and then make a really quick sauce that usually uh, like a sweet spicy sauce that goes on them. So if you've been to Thailand, like an open air market, you'll see May, you may have seen stalls that sell things on a stick, and this will be one of them. You can almost tell which ones of these Adam made. So with this broth, it's now really delicious. Do not take it away because all the pork juice and the seasoning from the pork has like seeped into this. I usually just use this to make my noodle soup. Okay, so save this. You need to add more seasoning and whatever. Boil some noodles, throw the meatballs in. You've got a complete meal out of the byproduct of you making the lukchin. Yay, bonus. So now we're gonna make lukchin ping. So ping is to grill. Um, usually things on a stick, we call it ping. I wanna taste it for you first though. Let's take one. See how bouncy they are? Mm. I'd like to say that they are perfect. Not too firm not too soft, nice and bouncy, but it's all pork. This is one thing about when you make it yourself, you know what goes in it, because there's, you know, these mystery meats, right? But you know that it's all pork and just good seasoning. Man, I can just munch on these for days. Now, let's ping these lukchin. I've got the broiler preheating on high. If you're doing this on the barbecue, you can do them on the barbecue, just on low to medium. It, it's already cooked, so you're just needing to grill the outside. Um, I'm gonna make the dipping sauce first. The dipping sauce is a really simple combination of sweet chili sauce, which you can buy or make. This is one that I make. Let's do two tablespoons. Typically, the nam tim for lukchin is a little bit more spicy and vinegary, so I'm gonna mix it with some sriracha. Um, this is a Thai style sriracha, so it's not quite as vinegary and aggressive as the rooster brand. So I can add a little bit more. So I start with like maybe 60, 40, 60 uh, percent sweet chili sauce, 40 percent sriracha, but that is a ratio that you can completely customize depending on the spiciness and sweetness of your ingredients. That's it. So I made a little blanket for the bottom of the skewers because they were starting to brown. So you can do that as well. Before I eat that, because that's really hot, Adam has requested that I bounce these meatballs to show you how bouncy they are. So we will do that. They actually bounce. There you go. A proof of bounciness. Looks good. Oh. Mm. Just so delicious, it makes you want to shake. So when you grill these, the exterior forms a bit of a skin, which adds to the texture of these. Mm. So nostalgic. I mean, this is stuff of childhood, you know, like you just go up to any street cart, you buy a stick for like five baht, I don't know how much they are these days, 10 maybe. And it's just satisfying, salty, chewy, bouncy bites with that sweet, vinegary, slightly spicy sauce. Mm. There's just nothing like it. And now you got a whole bunch to do all sorts of things with. You can throw them into a stir fry. You can just eat them like a snack. I have put them in a hot dog bun and eat them like a hot dog. I guess you would call that a meatball sub. But anyway, you can do so many things with them. The recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, Make sure you do so you don't miss a recipe like this and click the bell icon as well so you've got a notification when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious time.
<laughs> okay, so this is done. Now the hard part, the ball squeezing party. You don't approve? Adam doesn't okay. approve ball squeezing party. Okay. All right.